Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial video, I want to talk to you about using specific IDs to target unique things in Squarespace so you can customize them with CSS. There are actually four levels of targeting options that we can work with. Every page in a Squarespace website gets a collection ID, and inside that collection, you have individual page sections. Those get data section IDs. After that, you have blocks of content. Each block of content gets a unique ID. And then after that, you have the individual selectors. Usually in my custom code tutorials, we work with selectors like SQS block button element for a button. But let's say you only want to change the button on a single data section, you can use the data section ID first. Or what about changing the font style on just one individual page? We can do that using the collection ID. So what we're going to do today is hop on into my demo site. I'll show you an extension that I use to quickly grab that information and we'll add some custom codes so you can see how to use those four different levels of unique IDs to customize your own website. You ready to get started? Let's do it. Alrighty, so here we are in my demo site. I have a list of the four different targeting options we're going to talk about here. We've got collection ID, which is the entire page, data section ID, which is an individual page section, block ID, which is a block of content, and then selector, that's the code name for the elements on the page. So I have some example sections here. This section has two types of text and a button, same with this one, but let's get into some interesting targeting here. I'm gonna click on the Chrome extension that I have linked in the description below. Again, I'm not affiliated with them, just a fan. And right away, we see we have the block IDs, the data section ID, and scrolling up here at the very top, the collection ID. This collection ID is for the entire page. So let's go ahead and grab this one. We'll start at the beginning. I'll turn the extension off. And I'm going to hop into design and scroll down to custom CSS. Now let's say I want to apply uh, one particular font family to just this page and no other page on my site. I will paste the collection ID here and I'll just use an asterisk which is like a catch-all saying do this for all of the fonts and we'll open up a curly bracket and say font family uh, let's go with serif just the basic serif font you can see everything's changed. I'll select save and now let's click on a different example here on a different page in my site there we go. You'll see this page, which was a duplicate of that other one, has the original font. It doesn't have font family serif. That was only applied to the other collection. So I'm going to click this again and go back. This collection, or this page, is the only page that has that font assigned to it. Now let's do this with the data section ID. I'm going to turn the extension back on, and we're going to click on this one right here. And I'll turn it off. And instead of collection, I'll paste the data section ID. I'm going to go ahead and remove the word section. That's not necessary. All we have to do is have the data section ID between those square brackets. And now you'll see that this section gets the font family serif, but no other sections on the page do. Now this is where it gets even cooler here. Let's say we want to target uh, just this particular block ID. You see how we have the button that's also changing? What if we just want these two types of text to be changed to serif? Turning the extension back on, I'll grab the block ID instead of the data section ID, and I'll paste that right here. And now just that individual section of text gets the change to that font. The button is back to normal. Pretty cool, right? Let's take this one step further. We have the selector. Inside this section, I have multiple types of text. So instead of the asterisk, I'm going to say H3, and we'll target just the heading 3 text type in just this block ID. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Now, one last time here, I'll show you if we use the data section ID, it will change the entire section. Let's go ahead and turn this back on and I'll grab the data section ID here and paste it. We'll go ahead and turn the extension back off. And now I have said H3, that was the selector. We'll go ahead and change that back to the asterisk and it will be all types of text in that section. There we go, it's a different selector. Uh, that's the difference for data section ID. This will be the whole section, not anything else on the page right there. And then collection ID will be the entire page. So again, turning on this extension, grabbing the collection ID and placing that in the very beginning, every single type of font on this page, even down to the menu link and the title is going to be targeted with this particular code change. All right, so one thing I wanted to mention here, I'm gonna scroll down. If you're using a data section, give it brackets like this. This is data section ID, and then it's in between these square brackets right here. That'll happen automatically if you're using the extension that I recommend. For a block ID, start that with a hashtag. And then if you're making one code change to multiple things, you can separate them with a comma. I forgot that I added that note. Let's go ahead and pull this code right here, and we'll paste it into my CSS. There we go. And I'll go ahead and say exclamation point important, spelled correctly. 
there we go, to make sure that code is prioritized right there. And scrolling up, we can see the H1s and H2s are getting the purple text. H3 is not because this isn't the actual block ID. Let's go ahead and grab it for this one. And I'll paste that code right here. And I'll turn off the extension so we can see clearly. There we go. So my H1s on this page, my H2s on this page, and the H3 only in this specific block are gonna be changed to purple. Check it out, the H3 down here is still the same color that it was before. Isn't that interesting? So if you're making one code change to multiple things, just separate it by a comma. And again, the order that we're sticking with, collection ID is the page, data section ID is the individual section, block ID is the block ID is for the block of content, and the selector or the code name is what it's actually called in code, is the actual name of the individual element. So that about wraps it up. One last walkthrough for you. We have the collection ID, which is the entire page, the data section ID, which is the individual page section itself. Then we have the block ID, which is a block of content that can have more than one type of text. And then we have the selector or the code name for the individual element itself. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I took all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace and put them into one gigantic PDF. Available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.